How do you handle a hungry hog horny for Herbert Hoover who's a down home hairy ham and a half on a hell of a hippie hammer handle holder? Harry? I mean, it's a simple enough question, right? <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Folks, <coughs> can't talk. We're going to make a uh, bone saddle out of this blank here today. And uh, if everything goes right and doesn't take a whole lot of time, we may get to hear this puppy today. I don't know, because you still got to set the nut action unless it happens to be right. Who knows, man. Anyways, I'm going to clamp this uh, bone saddle here. I've already marked it off. I need to cut off of it. I'm just going to clamp it to the table here. I'll move you over here closer in a minute. And uh, cut this thing the right width. This is the old saddle that came out of it. It's a tiny little short saddle. Should have a really high saddle here now with low action. Anyways, let me bring you over here closer and we'll get on this. Before we get started, let me show you this. This is what I was trying to show you before. It had all the clamps and stuff on, couldn't do it. Put your, uh, uh, your laser, shine it perfectly in this seam right here in your top, okay? Right between the third and fourth strings here. And right up this seam in the top, and you can see it hitting it hits every fret. And you come up here at this end in the center. I can't get in the center. The the red light's going to shine on us, but you see what I'm talking about here. I think you can see that. See what I mean? Red line, dead center. That neck is on there, centered up. We're going to make a saddle now. Hold on. All I'm going to do here <clears throat> is just take a uh, Dremel tool and cut this off. It's kind of a nasty day outside and I don't want to go up to the, the big shop. So I'm going to try to do it with what I have down here. So here we go. I can cut it very well. Completed. You see I cut the bone blank roughly the same width as the old saddle that was in there. I left a little bit more so that saddle fits in there tight. And I left this a little bit long so I can work it down. But I got to get the width of it down. Look how wide that sucker is, man. Got to get it wider than that. Now, I don't have a thickness sander, okay? But I do have these cool vice grips I rigged up. I use them for all kinds of crap. Got to, I need to make this saddle thinner, okay? And I, it's, it's hard to hold it on there like that. So I've got the thing clamped up in here, if you can see that. It's got it clamped up in this vise so I can hold on to it. And I'm going to hold, hold the uh, saddle down on the sandpaper as flat as I can. And, uh, of course, I don't want any of you all stealing this fine piece of ingenuity right here. You've seen it before. And uh, <laughs> it works. <laughs> what can I say? Anyways, hold it here until I grind the saddle down to the to the vise there, and I'll know I'm getting pretty close. So let's get on with it. Check it now. Check. Let's figure out what the radius of this neck is, the fretboard get the radius from it and I'm going to put the same radius in the saddle. Smooth those edges down a little bit. And do the other side. I think the other side's almost 
here. Just putting around the edges up here, like I said before, smoothing them out a little bit so it doesn't catch on your shirt sleeve or you can hurt your hand. Uh, well, you can't see the guitar, can you? I've got the saddle fitting in there. Let's see which way do I have this thing. This way, I think. It's very tight. You see what a high saddle it's got. Now I'm going to have to lower that because the action is going to be ridiculously high if I leave that saddle that high in it. You can kind of get an indication here. I'm holding it up here about the height of the nut. Just a rough estimate. A rough look, I guess. You can see it's quite high down here. So we've got plenty of room to take it down, which is good. So uh, I say we get a couple strings on this puppy. Put on the low E, the high E and the low E, and we'll start setting that uh, string action if I can get my shit together. Next thing we want to do, we got we got to set this radius in this saddle to match the radius of the fretboard. And I was just checking it here, it's a, it's a 12, 12 inch radius it looks like. Well, not so much, but it looks like more like a compound radius. But since it's a 12 down through here, and it's not going to be played all that much down here, so I'm more worried about from a 14th fret up. And it is a 12. So I'm going to get a 12 inch radius block. I've already got some good deal, I've already got sandpaper on it. I don't know if you can see that little 12 on there or not, but it's a 12 inch radius block. I'm going to put this saddle in a, uh, in a vise and take this radius block and put that 12 inch radius into the saddle and uh, I've got a crap load of these I have uh, ones here you can check with the strings on the guitar if you can see that the string notches in them and uh, really very handy to check your your string uh, your radius anyways I want to show you how tight this fit uh, this is the way I like for my saddles to fit so you can turn the guitar upside down and the saddle doesn't just fall out on the floor. Now, it's not real tight, but it's it's pretty tight. And they're pretty snug. And that's the way I like for them to fit. They seem to carry sound a lot better that way. There you can see. If you shove it all the way down in there, it almost pick the guitar up from just the saddle. So let's get that in the vise and we'll do that next. Another ingenious contraption. You gotta love the ingenuity on this channel. All right, got the uh, saddle in there. I got the 12 inch uh, radius block here. I'm glad that already had. I'm glad it already had uh, paper on it. And you can see already started there. And uh, when we get the full 12 inch radius in that saddle, you see it's only touching. Where are we at? It's only touching right here on the sides right now. I like to kind of, you know, instead of, I don't want to sand it flat on top, so I kind of go, you know, at angles like so. Work the uh, block around. Keep the top of the saddle sort of rounded and not just, you know, not just flat on top. You know what I mean? There you can see. Can't find the camera. There you can see on the sides where the saddle's making contact. When that whole thing is making contact with the saddle we will have 12 inch radius in the saddle and I'll bring you back then I think you've seen enough of this see we're touching just starting to touch in the center of the paper here now so I'm going to stop right there and uh, go with that I think Remember how to work the vise now there you can see our 12 inch radius I think you can see that I can't see the camera too well, but uh, the monitor's on that side of the camera, opposite side from mine. I can't see it. I couldn't see it if, if it was in view. Anyways, there's a 12 inch radius, and I'm going to go with that, I think. Polish this all back up again now and make it look shiny. After I sweep up some bone dust, hold on. <laughs> Oh my God. 
So we've got a couple of old strings on here just to get in the ballpark. You can see, you can see how high that saddle is. It's really setting up there nice, man, and proud. So I'm going to uh, have to take it way down, but it's still going to have a high saddle higher than usual. And, uh, you know, I need to put strings on it and get it up to pitch and then get the neck relief, set the neck relief, and I'm going to tighten the stress rod first and put a back bow in it. And hopefully, to set the neck relief, I can loosen that under string tension. You ever want to tighten your truss rod under string tension? I don't ever do it. Always loosen your truss rod under string tension. Anyways, uh, thought I'd show you that little piece there I wrote. Alrighty, folks, check it out. Got strings on this puppy. That's just an old set of strings I've put together I had laying around here. Let me catch you up on what's going on. When you have the bridge off of a guitar and you glue it back on, especially when you have the bridge and the neck off of a guitar and you put them back on, you want to bring it up very, very slowly up to pitch. Now I've got it tuned one whole step flat right now. The G string is a F, the D string is a C. You know, everything's tuned one whole uh, step down. My God, you wait till you hear this thing. I only played a few chords on it and it's wicked. We need to check. First thing I want to check is the nut relief. Uh, the nut relief. Good Lord, I'm excited from hearing that. I want to check the nut action, okay? We would like to see about 18 thousandths clearance on that. Huh. I haven't glued the nut in yet either. When I put new strings on it, I'll glue the nut in. But it's not glued in right now. And look at that. 18 thousandths all the way across, I think. You couldn't beat that, man. Now, that's probably 16 on that first string. It won't go under the first string, but it does the second. So, they're all 18 thousandths except the sixth one. It's okay because it doesn't buzz, and when we tune it completely up to pitch, up to 440, you know, it's, it could raise a little bit because the guitar will have more stress on it then. So right now I want to check the uh, neck relief, not the nut relief. I can't believe I said that. And the uh, strings are very high down here, but we got plenty of saddle there to work with. I like to see twelve thousandths on the on the uh, the neck relief, and I have a twelve here. I'm going to come down here to. Uh, uh, about the 17th fret or so. I'm not sure which one's 17th on this. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, yeah. Note on the 17th fret. And come up here to 7. I just wanted to get in the ballpark. Okay, see, we, the neck relief is less than 12 thousandths. Let's just see what it is. It's probably about 10. And that's okay if it is, because like I say, I'm going to put the new strings on it and then bring it completely up to pitch, up to 440 pitch. Uh, that's lifting. It's less than 10, and that's still okay. But like I say, when I bring it on up, you know, one more step higher, it's going to have more stress on the guitar, you know what I mean? And it's going to uh, buckle more, so to speak. This is an 8, and it's tight. And it goes under that one. It'll go under any one of these three. I'm okay with it. So the neck relief looks like it's about 8 thousandths. That is really low. I don't go there. It's less than there it does. Yeah, it goes under there. Eight thousandths is what the neck relief is. But now try to stay with me here. When I put new strings on it, tighten it up tighter than what it is right now, it's going to bend that neck a little bit more. And if it doesn't, it's okay because I can stick a wrench in there and uh, it's okay to loosen the truss rod, take stress away with string tension up to pitch. It's okay. I would never, ever recommend tightening one up to pitch. I know a lot of people say they do it and they saw Taylor do it and 
tailor's got the money to fix it if it breaks. Believe me, you do not want to take the chance. You don't have to take it, so why do it? Uh, I want to get the action right, too, with these strings. It's ridiculously high right now. I just want to get in the ballpark, you know, just get an idea of where we are. Uh, we'll need 64s. Y'all know I always pick this up wrong. And we are at uh, 4... What was it? 764. 4, 5, 6, 764 on the bass string. 764 on the high string. Yeah, that's, that's got to come down. I'm going to measure that in thousands because it's easier to easier to lower the uh, to lower it. It's ninety thousandths on the base side, approximately, and uh, ninety thousandths on the the high side, very close to that. Now, a lot of you guys have asked me about this, and I've talked about it before. It's at ninety thousandths. We like to see that at about eighty thousandths, or whatever is equivalent to. 564, very close to that. Uh, it's at 90 thousandths, okay. If you want your action to come down 10 thousandths, which is what we want here, that'll put us down to about 80 thousandths. If you want it to come down 10 thousandths, you got to remove twice that amount that you want off of the saddle, okay? So if we want to drop this by 80 thousandths, I mean drop it two from 90 to 80 thousandths, that's the difference, it's 10 thousandths. We have to remove 20 thousandths off of the bottom of the saddle. And that's going to be the next step, I think. But uh, that's a cool thing to remember, if you can remember that. You'll, you'll, you're, setting your action will become a lot easier for you. Hold on. Folks, I don't know how long this video is becoming. I have no clue how long it becomes because I... Uh, work and do stuff and I forget to turn the camera on half the time and I don't want to make like a real long video here yet plus this thing needs to settle down a whole lot with with string tension on it uh, I will give you just a brief brief very brief demonstration of the sound just so you'll have some idea it's still tuned to a step flat <laughs> sweet or what man imagine what it's going to sound like when it's tuned up to pitch and those, those strings are old very old i can see rust on them i get the nut glued in in the next video we'll take the strings off of it because we're in the ballpark now we we'll take the strings off put the new ones on i might go ahead and in the next video or maybe tonight after this one and take that saddle down a little bit because it's way higher than it needs to be and uh, next video, you're going to hear this thing for sure. I promise we're going to put the strings on it, glue the nut in, and I check everything. I don't think we're going to have a problem with the intonation because it intonates with the strings that high right now. So, y'all, man, uh, stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss out on it. This thing is going to be a cannon. I can just tell that it is already. And I uh, hope to see you there. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.